here today with Tina Panariello. She is a salon owner. She is a hand nail design artist and author of the book Polished Filing Away at Life's Truths. Tina has a very interesting story to tell, so I've invited her to be on my show. And Tina, welcome today. Thank you very much, Angela. It's my pleasure. So, Tina, tell us about how you started out um, in designing nails, and did you go to nail design school? Um, how did that all come about? Well, I first started out being a mom. That's the first thing. Then I used to do my nails in my house, and I would decorate them. So when I would go to school to pick up my son, Wayne, the mothers would say, who did your nails? And I would go, I did. Well, do you do them? No, I don't. Never went to school, just put it around. So it turns out it kept going like that. I hooked up with somebody. We did nails together. And then I went on my own. And then I did my nails and with two clients. I started out with two clients. We started out in my home. That's where it started. And then I went from house to house and I traveled to Queens, Staten Island, downtown Brooklyn, and I would start out work from 8 o'clock in the evening after I put Wayne to bed, and I would work till 3 or 4 in the morning when I would come home, which was a little wacky, but you do five women in a house, and you're having coffee, you're doing nails, conversation, and that's how doing nails started. Now, Tina, I see that you have many uh, awards here. Um, so for someone without a formal education, I think that's really spectacular. Tell us about some of your awards and how you got there. When I first opened my salon, um, it turns out that I went to a beauty show, the IBS show, the International Beauty Show. And I noticed they do competition. So I said to myself, why not try? So I went. And that's how that started. I did not win. I lost. I cried my eyes out because I said, how could stripes and stones win over flowers, over something that's more intricate? Well, unfortunately, that's what won. But I was determined. And I lost a couple of times, and I wound up running into or decided to speak to a judge. And that judge was the best person I've ever met because she said to me, keep doing what you're doing. And eventually, they are going to love flowers and the intricacy. So I did. Between 1988 and 1989, I acquired 13 trophies. Wow. With no education, no schooling, I just picked it up from reading a nails magazine. And I practiced, practiced, practiced. And then I started winning. I only won third place once. I won second place a few times. The majority of my trophies are first place. I am a first and second place international world champion and a first and second place world international nail champion. I stopped competing for 10 years and I went back to compete. And um, I took first place again after 10 years of being away. Wow. Can we uh, do a close-up of Tina's nails that she has on today? And uh, again, there's that beautiful flower motif. We really don't see that anyplace else. It's really unique and your, your signature. So Tina, you won all these trophies and you won extensive competitions, third place, second place, and many titles in first place. Um, tell us about your career working for OPI. When I was competing in Paramount out in Long Island at the uh, Royal Beauty, distributorship, there were two young ladies there. One was a manager and one was a vice president. And I did an Indian motif because at the time I had just lost my boyfriend who was part Cree and I also liked the Indian motif. So that's what I painted on nails. And they actually hovered over me watching me paint. And they were amazed. They could not believe what I did. So after the competition they approached me and said, would you be willing to teach for OPI? Can you do this with nail polish? And I said, well, 
Yes, I can because I started with nail polish. I didn't start with paint. I started with nail polish. So they said, okay, we're going to set something up. We're going to speak to George Schaefer, who's the owner of OPI, and we will contact you. Well, that was the beginning of a beautiful friendship for three years. I taught nail art for OPI, and I used nail polishes, and they sent me to several different places. I was in California several times a year. Always education. OPI believed in education. All my certificates are hanging up. And I'm an expert nail technician for OPI. So were you teaching your style to the students? Or was it, well, it was a different style at the time. Um, but did the, the students get excited about what they were learning? Or was it part interactive or part painting? How did you do that? You let them do demonstrations on their own? Well, we would all form in a large room at one of the distributorships, and there would be nail polishes. I would present them with their, paint, their brushes. They had nail polishes, and I would teach them about a brush, how to clean it. And then they had to load their brushes with nail polish, two different color nail polishes. And I would teach them that. Then they would blend it. And they had, they worked on each other, but first they worked on paper. Then they worked on each other. And then they would come around me at a table and I would teach them and show them how I did it, which would give them an idea how to hold their brush, how to blend their nail polishes. And they were so excited they couldn't wait to get back to their tables and they wanted to start work. And it was very lucrative. It was, it was nice. I was paid for it as well. So it had its good points. There were very rarely bad points in any of this. It was all, it was great. I loved it. I loved it. All right, so Tina, you um, not only do you paint nails, but you've painted other surfaces and other media, including clothing and murals. Tell us about that. How did that get started? Well, I would go to the salon on my days off, like on Sunday, and I would set up the table, and I decided to paint a piano on a sweatshirt. And across the piano, I put um, roses, long stem roses. So I finished that, and then I decided, oh, let's put a matching set of pants, and I put a guitar. One of my clients would come in and get her nails done, and I, um, she would go in the back room, and I had a little game thing there, and she would play. And she saw the outfit, so she came in and said, Tina, can I buy that? I said, yes, you can. I go, but why? Why are you buying? I mean, where are you going? She goes, I'm going to see Elton John. I said, you're going to see Elton John in my outfit? Are you serious? She said, yes, and I'm going to try to sit up front to show him the piano. You know, so he's the piano man, so come on. That's what he should be seeing. I said, okay, Eleanor, you may have my outfit. And I told her how much it cost, and she bought it. And, yes, she went to see Elton John, and he, he acknowledged got he got jealous, and then he started being more flashy. Yes. Because of your influence on art, uh, the art on the clothing that you made, and uh, that's how Elton John got all of the glitter, because of Tina. <laughs> yes, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, and tell us about some murals that you did. I started out painting one of my customers. Um, she called it her garden room after I finished it, and behind her piano. I painted a tree with some flowers hanging off it, and then I extended it to a closet door, and then another side room, and then over her window, and then on the other side. And by the time I got done, it really looked like a garden. And then I decorated it for her. And then several years later, she was redoing her kitchen, so she asked me if I could make it into a Tuscany kitchen. So I painted grapes on a grapevine growing down her basement and all around the soffit in her kitchen, all grapevines. And it, if I must say so myself, it came out absolutely gorgeous. Gorgeous. And Beautiful. they made, um, I don't know what you would call it, something to step on so I could paint the wall. It was interesting. I liked it's it. Fabulous. So you work on little, little nails. And you work on full walls uh, in a home. And is there, and I see that your 
also not only an artist, but an actress. Tell us how that started. Well, when I first got married, after about a year into my marriage, my uh, ex-husband was on nights. And as I was talking at work, one of the other, my co-workers was going to an acting school, known mainly the prestigious American Academy of Dramatic Arts. And I always dabbled in it when I was in high school. So he said, come on, Tina, let's go. Go audition. So I said, I don't know. I'm not sure about this. So I go home. My husband is still home. I throw him on the bed. I sit on top of him, and I look at him, and I go, Al, I want to go to acting school. What do you think? And he looks up at me, and he says, well, you work. You make money. So go. And I was brought into the American Academy of Dramatic Arts, and I have a degree in acting. Wow. I have a graduate's degree in acting. Excellent, excellent. So, uh, so from acting and painting and being an artist, and you're certainly a Renaissance woman. Uh, Tina, tell us uh, more about from, from your nail art, when I met you, you were writing a book. So tell us how, how did that get started? How did you move from entrepreneur, business owner, nail art designer, uh, actress, mom, wife, to now an author? I've been writing for a very long time, but never did anything with it. And I've always, I wanted to do an art book. And I went online and I found some art books that were meant for little children. So on the same website, they had a little um, comment section with three different authors. And I picked one. And um, it happened to be a Christian author, which didn't mean anything. It just, Tate Publishing's a Christian author. Or shall I say, publishing house. So I send them a little note. I'm a 15-time winner, a uh, nail art champion. Um, I've been working so many years. I want to write an art book. So I sent it to them. Didn't hear anything. Finally, they called me up and um, we were playing tag. They called me up and Amanda Soderberg says, Tina, tell me a little, about, a little bit about you. So I started telling her and I felt like I was rambling on Angela. I told her everything within, I think, 10 minutes. What I did, what I painted, what I didn't paint how I won. I painted a, a cockatoo on a thumb, a unicorn on the other thumb. That's how I won the championship for the World uh, International Show. And she says, well, could you send me a little bit of your manuscript? I said, I don't have a manuscript. She goes, what do you mean you don't have a manuscript? I says, I don't have a manuscript, Amanda. I want to paint an art book. What do you, well, Tina, could you put something together? So I said, okay. Now my girlfriend's coming in from Wyoming. And I go, oh, God, I need her. I need her. We have to put this together. So first she's not coming. Then she's coming. So we sit down in my den, and we put something together, a biology, biology, biography of me, and I send it to them. I don't hear from them in a month, a month, a week. Now, Angela, this was during Passover and Easter, so highest holy days. I got so excited. I get a phone call on a Tuesday. I'm in my car. Tina, it's Amanda Soderberg from Tate Publishing. <laughs> Excuse me. We're offering you a contract. We want you to write your book. And um, we're sending you a contract for your book and a contract for a publicist. So you need to. I did research. Turns out a publicist is a lot of money. So they were giving me a publicist or I was paying for it. And they said, as soon as we get it, please read it well and send it back. And that's what I did. And I sent it back. And um, I had to pay for a publicist. And my, um, <laughs> my aunts gave me the money and said, your mother would like you to have this so you could do what you want to do. And a year later, and a lot of hard work, and a lot of hours, and a lot of not knowing what to do, because I was supposed to get help, Angela, and the girl had a nervous breakdown. So I had to learn how to type on a computer. 
it doesn't work. I got the dragon. That did the typing <laughs> for me. Put it in your ear, talk into a microphone, and I see the computer. So doing you didn't this. really write the book. No. You, you didn't really write it. You were it was an you spoke the book, and then that that transcribed to typing. So that program allowed you to write a book by speaking. Well, I had to write it first because I didn't know what to write. So I wrote it first and read what I wrote into my dragon. And then at 10, 11 o'clock at night, I'd be on the phone with my girlfriend from Wyoming. And that's how we proofread it. Wow. By doing that. And I'm going to tell you what was funny, Angela. I wrote and thought they only wanted about nails. Everything to do with nails. Well, they write back to me and say, Tina, were you ever married? Did you have children? Did you ever date? Uh, what happened in your life? There was more to your life than nails. I said, oh my gosh, yes, there is. Well, could you tell us about it? They gave me two weeks. They gave me two weeks to fill it in. Now, I had a year to do this, but it doesn't take a year for all that. Two weeks, I had to put my whole life into this book around my nails. Now, that was not so easy because my life had very bad ups and downs. So, um... You know, I, I challenges and yeah, successes. Definitely, and, definitely challenges. And, uh, did you have any mentors in your life? When I was growing, I didn't think I did, but I guess because I used to go to my aunts all the time, my father's family, they sort of mentored me. And then I would say the young lady that I met, who was the judge, she was my mentor because I went to her school. Patchwork Technology of Nail Art, and I taught nail art there for two years, so she was a mentor, and um, naturally, and then I met you, and then you became one of my mentors, and I have another gentleman that I met through another organization, and he became a mentor, but I've never really had any that I looked up to. I am a very strong woman. I believe... If I want something, I have to do it. Based on what you're, you're telling us about your life, you have an incredible drive and passion that you love what you do, you, you like interacting with people. Um, as an entrepreneur and a business owner, uh, how does that happen? Are you born with that drive? Did you learn it from anyone else? Was it because of... Uh, for a need that you had economically? Was it just a passion that you had this expression of art, artistry that you wanted to, you know, just show? How, how did all that happen? What do you think? Well, we have to go back to uh, when I was little. Um, I was, the, I had a brother who was older than I was. And um, my mother sort of favored my brother. But my mother was taken away from us when she was very young. She was put, she had a bad heart. She was put into a, a nursing home at the time, a rehab home, but they didn't call it that. And it was my brother and I. And I came, grew up in a very talented family. My father had art in him. My brother was art, an artist. My uncles were artists. But I didn't know this. When I was younger, I wanted to do makeup. I used to play in my bedroom and make funny things out of uh, tissues. And then what happened was I was in elementary school and I would be a monitor and I would take care of the children, go up to the classroom, and I would teach the children what was on the blackboard before the teacher came into the classroom. So there I thought I was a teacher. Then when it came to talk, I was always able to talk in front of a classroom. And um, when I gave my book report, everybody shut up. They all listened to what I was saying, which like drove me insane. And then in high school, um, my brother was in the Marine Corps, and my brother decided he uh, didn't like the Marine Corps. So I was a 98 student, and I went from 98 to 65. And my mother ignored me, and my father worked late at nights. So it was me. I had to take care of me. And thank God I have a very, very strong will, exceptionally. And when I want something, I want it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to get it one way or another. Always the right way, but I want to do it. So 
what I did was, in the high school, I wanted to go to college, so I went to the to uh, Brooklyn College, and I didn't get in, which devastated me. When my brother was away, I was distraught, I was down, I took the weight of my family on my shoulders, and I was like, when you're not nurtured, you got to find something. So my family helped me. And then I became a secretary. From a secretary, I went to acting school. From acting school, I took I had a jewelry business and in home jewelry business, and that's where my nails came in. I gave my nail designs to all the women that gave me a party. I gave it to them as a gift. So I had a drive in that. So I made some of the. Um, I became. Um, not vice president, but you become in the president's club. They had all different clubs. Right. So my sales were very high. So I did that for a while. Then after that, there went that, then went college, then went opening my school or my class or the store. I taught in my store. I went to teach. But I wanted what I wanted. I tasted the competition. I tasted what I wanted. I knew I had a drive, and I still have that drive. Now, because of my book, because of what I've done, it's a motivational, inspirational story of my life. The good, the bad, and the ugly. And I just did it. I believe, just do it. So I did it. The New York Daily News interviewed me. The Home Reporter interviewed me. iHeartRadio interviewed me. I spoke at colleges, high schools. So now you have a cre career as an author. What's the name of your book again, Tina? It's Polished, Filing Away at Life's Truths. So you're an author, you're a motivational speaker, and you go to colleges and high schools? Yes. And you speak, and trade schools, right? Um, nail art schools? Yes. You go to different schools, and what do you tell those kids when you're there? Basically, I tell a part of my story, and I tell them, you need a dream, you need a vision, because without that, you're not getting anywhere. You've got to believe, first of all, you've got to believe in yourself. If you don't believe in yourself, you're not going to get anywhere, even if it's a little belief, just little. Take that little and make it a little bigger. Find a way to motivate yourself. Find a way to inspire yourself. Talk to people. I'm here. You could talk to me. You could email me. You could write me. I'll give you my number. But without a motivation and without a drive, where do you think you're going to get? Don't give up. You're such young children. You're young adults. Go out and find something you like. If I could do it through all the ups and downs, listen, guys, I didn't start with a spoon in my mouth. It wasn't gold, it wasn't silver, it wasn't brass. I had nothing. I lost it all, and I got it back. And if I could do it and raise a child and go to work, and I divorced, and I still went to work, and I still built up my business, and I still got customers, and... By word of mouth, everything grows. You could do it. I could help you do it. I could, I could guide you to do it. And that's what I tell them. I tell them that you can take what you believe in and make something out of it. And what do you see on their faces when you're telling them things like this? Their eyes light up. They're like, oh my God, is that <laughs> true? Is that true? And they really, and, and they sit there and they raise their hand and they go, well, how'd you do this and how did you do that? I just did it. I didn't question it. Tina, you have quite an expansive career and you're still in business. You have a salon in Brooklyn. And I'd like you to tell, you've won several awards, which you mentioned before, which are on display in your salon. So how do you increase your business? You're at this a very long time more than 30 years, I would say. So how do you switch from a jewelry design business to 
nail painting business to mural art to acting? I mean, how did you, uh, where do you get your customers from? How does that work? I'm doing nails about 37 years. <laughs> That's scary. 37 years. And basically, my nails are always done. So everybody asks me about my nails. And I'm always carrying a business card around with me. And like I said, when I was doing jewelry, I flaunted my nails and said they could have that as a gift. So that's how that started. A lot of them are still my customers. I have customers with me 37 years, 30 years, 29 years, 28 years. Wow, that's remarkable. It just, and I just acquired a new clientele that's only with me maybe two months. <laughs> and how it works for me is basically word of mouth. And since I like to talk, since I like to show my nails off and everybody sees them, you get changed, they see your nails, you get coffee, you're drinking. And that's how it starts, Angela. And then, um, because I was in the New York Daily News, people have found it that way, so they've contacted me from being in The Spectator, the same thing, The Home Reporter. So you've been working a uh, public relations circuit uh, through, through the the authorship of your book and also through your services business. So to speak, yes, and through word of mouth. Each customer tells another customer. And believe it or not, it just happened just recently on Facebook. A young lady came to me yesterday and had her nails done, and I think it was her daughter or a friend or someone said, I want that, where do I go? And that's how it does. From the social mentor. media. Believe it or not, yes. I did try it. I wasn't out to do it. It just happened. <laughs> so Tina, I think you're remarkable from starting starting very early in your business career with direct-to-consumer selling, that's the technical term for it, with the jewelry business, then designing your nails, giving act, you know, providing actual samples of your work on your fingernails, expanding that to clothing and mural painting, then to being an author, which is when I found, when we met, yes. because you know I'm an author and you're an author and we were both in the middle of writing our book, although you were talking your book, I was writing my book, and um, then you're, you're just not afraid, Tina, you're just not afraid, even for public relations, to get the word out in the press, social media, which is you know fairly new to everyone who's who's been a business owner and it's a it's a non-traditional way to market for the, the traditional marketer like like you are and I think you're just remarkable and talented and gifted and and just a wonderful person and Tina I want to thank you for coming on the show for telling everybody your entrepreneurial history about your life and I wish you only the best. Thank you so very much. Forever. Thank you very, very, very much. Welcome.